Hello, mathematicians. Welcome to a little corner of the internet called Marshable Math. My name is Mr. Marsh. Today we're going to be discussing exponent rules and what I like to call the Tower of Math. So if you get yourself a pencil, some paper, to do some practice problems, we'll dig right in. So I have a question for you. We're going to start off rather simple. What if I had something like 2 plus 2? Can you tell me what the answer might be? Don't worry, I trust that you all have this memorized by now. The answer would of course be 4. But what if I had lots of 2's? 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Hmm, what is that? You might add them all up. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 2 more, plus 2 more, 10. But if you thought about it, couldn't you count up the number of 2's that you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And actually, instead of doing an addition problem, couldn't you make a multiplication problem? Couldn't you say 2 times 5 is equal to 10? 2 being the thing that is repeatedly added, and 5 being the number of um, times that we have a 2, right? So uh, we could say that multiplication then is repeated addition. What if I did something else? What if I said uh, 2 times 2, and I'm going to use a dot here instead of the x, because everybody knows x is a variable. What if I said 2 times 2? We would say, well, that's 4, simple enough. But then what if I said 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? What might that be? Hmm? Well, you could repeatedly multiply it then, of course. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 more is 8, times 2 more is 16, times 2 more is 32. Uh, you could say that that's 32. But there's a more sophisticated way of expressing that. We could say, hey, if I got the same thing that's being multiplied, I can write it as an exponent. It would be 2 to the fifth is equal to 32. So you could say an exponent here then is something nothing more than repeated multiplication, where the 2 is the, what do we call these things? Do you remember? 2 is the base. 5 is the exponent. And then what about 32? 32 has its own special name. What do you call the answer to an exponential problem? Think about it for a second. No, it's not the product. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. No, it's not a quotient. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. No, it's not a sum. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. Um, so product, multiplication, quotient, division, um, sum, addition. What is the answer to an exponential problem? Don't you know that the whole time you have the power yeah, so the answer to an exponential problem is called the power. It's important that we know what these terms all mean because when we talk about the base or the exponent of the power, you need to make sure that you know what it is. Okay, so there's some rules, though, for working with exponents. You've probably seen them before. They go something like this. I'm going to give them to you in generic form, and then we'll do some practice with some actual numbers. I'm going to use B for the base. Now, and on all of these, the bases have to be the same. If the bases are different, the, uh, the pattern here won't work. But the first rule would be this. Uh, let's see here. We would say that b to the mth power, in other words, the, this is the base, that's the exponent, multiplied by b to the n, as in November, is equal to, what do you do to the exponents when you are multiplying the bases? Well, you'd add them, right? So b to the m plus n, that would be, uh, maybe we would call that the, the uh, product rule. Um, number two, what if we had ones where we divide them? What if I have b to the m divided by b to the n? Same basis, if I'm dividing the bases, what do I do with the exponents? Well, that's simple, b to the m minus n, you subtract them. Three, what if I said um, b raised to the m, but then itself raised to the n. In other words, I'm taking an exponent and I'm raising it to um, another exponent. What would that, what would that be? Uh, well, it would be b to the m times n, or b to the m and m. And no, I did not say m and m. And no, I am not referring to uh, Slim Shady. 
real um, or otherwise. Oh, we'll get rid of that stuff. There's one more. Most of the time you'll see these in algebra books, and then later on you'll get number four. I'm going to go ahead and give you number four now. Number four says this. Number four says if I have b to the m and I'm taking the nth root of it. In other words, I'm taking a root with an index of n here. That's equal to, well, if, I, if I'm raising one to an exponent, I multiply. What do you think I would do if I take an exponent and I do a root of it? If you said it would be a fraction or divided by, you're correct. It's b to the m divided by n. Now, some of you are going, whoa, wait a minute. A fractional exponent? Yeah, you can have rational exponents. That's not a big deal. Maybe a little bit beyond you right now, but stick with it. I think you'll see how it works in the end. So let me do some practice problems here for you, and we'll see if we can sort this out. Um, let's try these. Let's do number one on this one. Let's say 2 cubed times 2 squared. And then number two, we'll say 5 to the sixth over 5 to the fourth. And then on number three here, we'll say 3 squared, but then itself cubed. Oops, missed on the parenthesis on that one. And then on number four, let's say we'll take the square root of 2 to the sixth. Okay. Go ahead and press pause in the video. See if you can uh, apply these rules over here to solve these kind of uh, practice problems here. Go ahead, I'll give you a second. Okay, are you done? All right, so what do we have here? We have two bases of the same. They're being multiplied together, so what do I do with the exponents? I add them. This should be equal to 2 to the fifth. Now you say, prove it, Mr. Marsh. Well, okay, I'll, let me demonstrate it for you. If it's 2 cubed, isn't that the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2, right? 3 of the bases. Multiply, put that multiplication in there. That's that one right there. Now, 2 squared, which would be 2 more. 2 times 2. Okay, how many do I have here? Count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go, 2 to the 5th. See? It works. What about this one now? 5 to the 6th divided by 5 to the 4th. If you said that that was 5 to the 6 minus 4, which would be 2, you're correct. Let's double check it though, just with the definition of what an exponent is, and we'll see if it's true. 5 to the 6th, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, phew, geez, a smaller number. Over 5 to the 4th, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we have the same factors on top as we have on bottom, so we can cancel those, right? This one cancels that one, this one with that one, this one with that one, this one with that one, and then we're done canceling on the bottom because we've run out. How many are left? Two of them. See? Doing pretty good. All right, this one now, 3 squared cubed. Well, when I raise an exponent to an exponent, it would be 3 to the 2 times 3, which would be 6. And if you think about this, if we cube it, don't we have th uh, three of these bases all together? Because you know, the parentheses means it's the whole thing that's the base. So doesn't that mean 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared? So in other words, I've got three of these, right? One, two, three. So, actually, if I come back up here and use this rule right here, if I'm multiplying, it would be 2 plus 2 plus 2, and that would be 6. I could put them all out here for and you see that there's 6 of them. But we see that the pattern works. What about this one? This one's rather unique. If we do the exponent rule, it would be 2 to the 6 divided by something. What's the index out here if there isn't one written? Do you know what it is? Well, this is the square root symbol, right? And we say square root because there isn't an index here written, so we know that it's the square index or the index of 2. So that would be 6 divided by 2, and the answer then is going to be 2 to the what? 2 to the third? Okay. If we had multiplied this out, 2 to the sixth, what's that, 64? Square root of 64, what is that, 8? <laughs> Isn't 8 2 cubed? Yeah? Okay. So all this stuff works. But I have to admit, that's a little confusing. How do you going to remember all that? You've probably seen that before in math classes, and um, I bet for a lot of you it didn't stick. Well, I have an invention of mine that I'm very, very proud of. 
that I'd like to share with you. In fact, if there would be one thing in the world that I would publish and write a book about, it would be about what I'm going to share with you next. It wouldn't be very big because it would only take up a page. You'd buy a page and, you know, there you know, have a hardcover on the back and a hardcover on the front and it would say, you know, my name on the front and you'd open it up and, wow, it's just my one-page book. <laughs> That's great. Okay, the Kindle edition would be really cheap. But uh, in any case, I call it the Tower of Math and see if you can follow along with me now. Um, remember before we said that if you repeatedly added something, it was going to be multiplication? And that's kind of along the same idea. We're going to work up in levels. The most basic thing that you can do with numbers is you can add them. So on the first level of the Tower of Math, we're going to say it's addition. Okay. Um, what is the inverse operation of addition? In other words, if you were to go backwards from adding, what would it be? Would it not be subtraction? I'm going to put subtraction over here on the right-hand side. Um, what now? Well, if you repeatedly add something, what did we say that was? That was multiplication, right? So if you add the same thing over and over again, it's the same thing as multiplying. So if we go up one level, we would say that the more sophisticated way of adding things repeatedly would be to multiply them. What is the inverse then of multiplication? If you were to undo multiplication, what would it be? Would that not be division? With me so far? Okay. Now, if we repeatedly multiply things, we said that was an exponent. So I'm going to put an E up here because I don't really have a symbol for an exponent. And if we do the inverse of an exponent, what would that be? Would that not be a, a root? And so I will put the root symbol in there. Notice I didn't call it a square root because you can have roots other than the square root. You can have cube roots and quartic roots and stuff like that. But anyway, this is the basic structure of what I'm going to call the Tower of Math or <laughs> Tom for short. So here, there's my friend. His name's Tom. Now, how do you use it though? Um, once you've got the structure set up, here's how you use it. It's very, very simple. Number one, all right here. Number one, you determine the operation on the bases. Or maybe there's, if there's only one, it's just the base. Okay. So you're going to think here, what's the operation on the base? Am I adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, exponentiating, or taking the root of it or something like that? And then you pick your spot. Where are you? Where are you on this tower of math? And then number two, and this is the beauty of it, it's very, very simple. You drop down one level for the operation on the exponents. I hope you can see that. Wait on there. E X. You drop down one level on the exponents. So let's come back over here to this one. Okay. Now, what am I doing with the bases here on this one? Can't you see that I'm multiplying them? So I would start right up here at this level on the Tower of Math. So I'm multiplying the bases. Drop down one level, and that will tell you what to do with the operation on the exponents. I add them. Did I add them? You bet. Woohoo! What about this one? I'm dividing the bases. Okay. So I'm going to start over here on this side. Drop down one level now for my, or my operation on my exponents. I should be subtracting my exponents. Do I subtract them? You bet. 6 minus 4, 2. See? Subtraction. Division of the bases. Subtraction of the exponents. Multiplication of the bases. Addition of the exponents. But what about this one? Hey, I'm exponentiating the base. And it's already, ex I'm taking the exponent of an exponent. So I'm starting up here. Drop down one level. I should multiply the exponents. 2 times 3, 6. That's what we have right here. If you're exponentiating, you multiply. And if I'm doing the root, I should be dividing the exponents, right? It's the 6 divided by the 2. It's always the inside divided by the index out here. So it's the inside one here divided by that one right there. Okay? There's the Tower of Math. If you can set that up, if you're not quite sure what to do, just draw that real simple on paper or whatever you need to do. And then think, where am, what am I doing with the bases? Oh, then drop down one level, and that's what I do on the exponents. It's wonderful. Let me give you a couple more practice ones, and we'll see how you do. Shall I leave this up here? I think I'll leave that one up here, because I'll come back to it. Let's do the following. Let's see here. 
Number one, and these in no way then are connected with these ones and twos over here. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't do the ones then. Maybe I should do like bullet points or something. I don't want you to be confused. First one is going to be 5 cubed squared. Next one. Um, 3 squared. Well, I guess I can't use bullet points either because then it looks like multiply. Um, 3 squared times. 3 to the fourth. And then the third one is going to be 5 squared divided by 5 to the sixth. And then the last one, if I can get it down here, is going to be the cube root of 4 to the sixth. Okay, press pause in the video. Give yourself a shot on those. See how they do. <laughs> I lost the cap to my marker. Playing hide and seek with myself with uh, the marker cap. Don't worry though. I'll win. Okay, here we go. 5 cubed squared. I'm exponentiating the base, so I should be multiplying the bases. This one should be simplified to be 5 to the 3 times 2, which is 6. There you go. 3 squared times 3 to the 4. So let's see here. I'm multiplying the bases, so I'm going to add the exponents. This should be 3 to the 6. This one down here now is interesting. I'm dividing the bases, so I should be subtracting the exponents. It's 5 to the, wait a second here, 2 minus 6, really? Negative 4? Yeah, it's negative 4. So let's talk for a moment about what a negative exponent means. If I were to take this one here, and I were to like show you what 5 squared means, it's 5 times 5, and then on the bottom now I've got 6 of these, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Cancel, 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 cancel. I've got four left, yes, but where are they? They are on the bottom, right? So the negative exponent is a way of communicating that I've got four of them, but they don't belong in the top. Okay, fundamental principle here is that a negative exponent tells you that the base is on the wrong side of the fraction bar. So this is actually equal to one over five to the positive four there. Okay? If you've got a negative exponent on the bottom of the fraction bar, it means the base belongs on the top. Notice I didn't just say flip it. It depends upon where you are. You might have more than you know, just a single number going on. You might have multiples, and one of those little things has got a negative exponent. That, that guy belongs down below if he's on top, and if he's on the bottom, he belongs on top if he's got a negative exponent. Okay? So the negative exponent simply means that your base is on the wrong side of the fraction bar. All right, this one here. This one should be 4 to the 6th divided by 3. And that's going to be 6 divided by 3, should be 4 squared. Did you get that? Okay, good. Let's try some others. <laughs> There's my cap. I won. I didn't like my, uh, I didn't like my asterisks. So I'm going to go through here and do a little lines here for this. Hopefully we'll keep it all straight. Let's do the next one. Uh, let's call this one then number five. Number five is going to be six squared times six to the fourth. Number six is going to be two to the fifth divided by two to the fifth. Number seven is going to be three squared times four cubed. And then number eight. Number eight is going to be five to the sixth plus five squared. Okay, press pause in the video now. Try these. Okay, back at it. Here we go. Multiplying the bases, add the exponents. This should be easy. Six to the sixth. No, it's not 36. Don't make the mistake and multiply. An exponent does not mean multiply. What about this one? Shouldn't it be 2 to the 5 minus 5, which is 2 to the 0? Hmm, what is that? If you said that it was 0, you are wrong. If you said that it's 1, 
you're correct. Well, anything to the zero exponent is one. But why is that? Why is it not zero? Lots of folks want to call that thing zero, but it's not. Why is anything to the zero exponent one? Well, you know that it is, but if you think about it. Don't I have a fraction here with the same thing in the numerator as I have in the denominator? Sure. So just like if I had something like, oh, 3 over 3, you would call that 1. Well, 2 to the 5th over 2 to the 5th, that's 1 too, right? 32 over 32, it's 1. There you go. Why? Think about that. What about this one? Well, I don't know. It's just 3 squared times 4 cubed. Did, did you try to do an exponent rule on that? I'm sorry. Remember what I said at the beginning? The bases have to be the same, right? See, this, this base times this base, these are both the same thing. I really can't do an exponent rule here on this to simplify. I'd have to actually, you know, pound it out just with the numbers. I'd have to make this 9 and this, what is 4 cubed? 64? 9 times 64? Something like that. But I couldn't do an exponent rule on it. So this one stays put. 3 squared times 4 cubed, I guess. It's nothing really I could do with that, with that one. <laughs> and did this one get you? Yeah, this one was a surprise too. Okay, five to the six plus five squared. What am I doing? Uh, my operation on my bases. Remember, the bases have to be the same. That was the problem with this one. The bases weren't the same. What's the problem with this one? Well, if my operation on my bases is add, I'm going to come over here to the Tower of Math and I'm going to drop down a level. How do I do that? There, there is no basement in the Tower of Math. You can't do it. Just like, come, where do you go? Mm, well, you're, you know, you're right there on the ground level. You can't go anywhere, right? And you knew that too, if you think about it. Okay. If you have a, a simple kind of a, an algebra problem where I said something like x squared plus x cubed, I, I really can't add those together, right? They're not like terms. Why is that? Well, I'm adding the bases. Okay, there's not an exponent shortcut to do there, right? So um, if you try this, if you try doing exponent rules when things are added, I would say that you've you know, tried to put yourself in the dungeon of the Tower of Math, okay? Maybe you've decided that the Tower of Math is Baradur. Oh, the, uh, got the Eye of Sauron, oops, there we go. Oh, here, perfect. The Eye of Sauron is gonna see you and you know, stare at your soul and suck the life out of you if you try to actually do an exponent rule when you're adding the bases. But, I'm just kidding. It's really not Baradur, the stronghold of Sauron. It really would just simply be a lighthouse, right? Let's see if I can draw a lighthouse here. Lighthouse. Keep shining out. To warn that lonely sailor, otherwise known as the mathematician. Okay, so you really can't do an exponent rule here on this one because you're adding the bases and there is no way to drop down one level. Now, having said all that, let's see if I covered all of my bases. I think so. These things are good here. Here's the Tower of Math, maybe help you use them. I want to talk one more moment about some, about some misconceptions. Let me just go ahead and erase all this. Exponents sometimes give people a hard time. And they give people a hard time because small things make big differences. Remember this, if I had something like 3 squared, I would say, well, that's real simple, that's 9. 3 is the base, 2 is the exponent, 9 is the power. But what if I had negative 3 squared? What is that? Well, the way I've written it here, what's the base? Well, the base... Um, is simply the thing that is immediately to the left of the exponent. So the 2 here, it, it's telling me to square the 3. The negative is not part of the base. So this would be the same thing as me saying negative of 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, so the negative of that would then be negative 9. If I wanted to include the negative with the base, I would have to put a grouping symbol around it. Negative 3 squared. See, now the group tells you, hey, the 3 is part of the base, but also the negative sign is too. So if I take a negative 3 times a negative 3, that's equal to a positive 9. So please, if you're going to be um, substituting, say, like negative 3 into an equation or something like that, where you've got something like, I don't know, uh, 2x plus, good grief, I'm just making this up here, 4y squared, 
and let's say your x is 2, so you've got 2 times 2, plus 4. Don't say negative 3 squared like that. If 3 is your y, don't, don't write it like that. That's horrible grammar in terms of mathematical writing. Okay, you're telling me 4 minus 3 squared? No, it's times, right? Parentheses here. And also, you know that the negative goes along with it. Okay, so be mindful of parentheses when you're dealing with exponents. If you've got more than one thing going on here, if you've got more than one thing as part of the base, you've got to have grouping symbols. Also, don't make this mistake. If I have 2x um, cubed and then I square it, now notice I've got the 2 and the x cubed there as part of the base. This is simplified as following. The 2 gets squared, 4, and the x cubed gets squared. And I'm exponentiating here, so I'm going to multiply my exponents. So it's going to be x to the 6th. Alrighty? That's not the same thing as this. 2 plus x cubed squared. Hmm. This is not equal to 2 squared plus x to the 6th. You cannot, and I'm going to say it again, cannot simply apply or somehow distribute an exponent across a sum. But wait a minute, Mr. Marsh, you did it right here. Well, that's because it was multiplying in there. That was the operation. And what is an exponent? It's repeated multiplication, right? It's not repeated addition. That's multiply. So this symbol changes the whole problem. You cannot do that. You're going to have to then actually multiply it out. You could say 2 plus x cubed times 2 plus x cubed and then expand it the way you normally would. You'll get this for sure and you'll get that as well, but you're missing something when you do it that way. And if you, if you ever do that, that's a bad idea. Okay, so please don't make that mistake either. One last thought. We kind of stopped, didn't we? We went up a level, repeated addition is multiplication, repeated multiplication is an exponent. I've always wondered, and I don't know, so I'm asking. I've always wondered, what is repeated exponentiation? Is there another higher level? How high does this tower of math go? I've only gone up to the, to the third level. I don't know if it goes higher or not. If you find out, please let me know. I'd be interested in figuring that out. Okay. Remember that mathematics is a human endeavor, not just for professional mathematicians. If you're a human being, mathematics is for you too. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.